In 2021, Porsche released the quickest estate car on sale, pistons or not, and it's called the Taycan Cross Turismo. And when I reviewed it, I thought it was wonderful. This is the Sport Turismo. Same body shape, but no plastic cladding, not as high off the ground, and this will eventually be available as a rear wheel drive only car. And when I reviewed the Cross Turismo, in my verdict, I did say this. I just hope one day they build a Taycan Turismo that isn't a cross, that isn't a cross. That isn't a cross. So in this review, I'm gonna find out whether I prefer this or the Cross Turismo. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to The Late Break Show. So the point of this review is twofold. Firstly, is to talk about the different body shell shape, which it does share, of course, with the Cross Turismo. And the other thing is they've decided to launch the Sport Turismo, this, first of all, in GTS uh, state of tune. And that sits below the turbo and above the 4S. But eventually you'll be able to buy this with all different states of tune. Couple of minor aesthetic differences. This is normally um, gloss black, this, this front bumper kind of aero lip. But this particular car has the optional carbon sport design package. So this is carbon here, as you see it. Uh, the details inside the lights on this car are black. And then you move around here. This particular version's got 21s, but you can mix and match the alloys as options on Porsche. And I've got to say, uh, I know which one I would have. I'll show it to you in a minute. The GTS comes with steel brakes. This is the same as all Taycans and it's still quite cool. Wipe your finger underneath there. You've got your charger on both sides. Rapid charger only on one side. The GTS package comes with the Performance Plus larger battery. I'll talk about that when I'm driving. Here, smoother roof compared to the Cross Turismo, no roof rails. And of course, the Cross Turismo um, is different because it has the plastic cladding on the wheel arches and it has extra plastic cladding down on the sills and the sort of winglets. Now it does have these winglets here on the GTS. This is carbon again, like the front, this carbon detail. Personally, I would not option a car like this with carbon inlays for the reason that it's over 2.3 tonnes. Why would you add carbon onto a really, really heavy car? A, to me, that's like a massively fat person wearing a tight track suit. I'm sorry, I don't see the point. So yeah, this, this sill area, again, normally this inlay here is not carbon as standard, it's gloss black, but it's a good little shape. And look at this side profile, that roof there, the panoramic roof, which has a very cool trick, which we can show you when we go inside. And going down here, very, very similar again, turbo style rear, um, ribbed bumper. I think the Turismo body shape is 11 mil longer than the saloon slash sedan. And, and you know, the Taycan's been out now, I think for three years. It's been out for a year in this sort of shape. And I drove the Cross Turismo back in April, 2021, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. But one thing I did say, like I said in the intro is, I think it looks cleaner and a bit more attractive like this. And I don't need it to be 20 mil higher. I just don't. This is probably one of the coolest elements of the Taycan with the Porsche full width kind of rear light visor and it, inside can you see in between the, the letters you've got what looks like circuitry. It's a nice piece of design and also the GTS has matte finish badging and it has black. A lot of the accents are black. They make a point of that. The launch colours are this, carmine red uh, and crayon grey. No cost option is black and white. I think everything else is a cost option. In this color though, I kept thinking, where have I seen this color before on a sort of a statey Porsche? And it was a car from the 80s called a Porsche 944 DP Cargo, made by a company in Germany called DP Motorsport. It's a quirky thing. I'll put a picture up on screen, but it's a very cool coach built shooting brake. I really like it. This is the angle that you're at where the camera is, is probably the coolest one. You can really see how far in these rear lights tunnel in, and you can see these hips. It's a big car, I'm not gonna lie. The Taycan is a big car anyway, it's a wide car, but it's a little bit smaller than a Panamera. 
Panamera is a little too big. If anything, I would love this to be ever so slightly smaller with the same interior space, but I don't know if they're ever going to make a smaller version. Nice, perhaps a little bit over-designed. So, 800 volts the Taycan, just like the other models. Um, you can charge this car up to 270 kilowatts, so very, very rapid with the CCS. Um, 313 mile range theoretically because the GTS model comes as standard with a Performance Plus battery pack, and that means that it's 83.7 kilowatt hour size, usable size. Um, at home with the wall box, the seven kilowatts, um, that will take nine hours to charge, but it'll take 22 minutes to charge from like zero to 80 if you can find a charging point like Ionity uh, that'll do 270 kilowatts. If you want a large, fast, sharp focused estate car, you currently have the choice of various powers of the brother of that car, the Piston Brother, the Porsche Panamera Turismo. Uh, and then you've got the sometimes four wheel drive Mercedes E63 AMG. And then you've got the benchmark for sort of rapid family transit, the Audi RS6, which in its current form has got some 600 horsepower. Um, and it's got 800 newton meters of torque running through that Quattro system, 3.6 to 62. It's incredible. And I really mean this, but when I drove it recently, it felt a little bit chiropractic. Oh, and let's not forget that the Audi RS6 right now is 100 grand. That, the GTS Sport Turismo, 104. So it's very, very similar price tag. I almost forgot to say, that remember, there is no EV fast estate car out there. There's an MG5, which is an electric estate car, great value, good range, but it's not a sporty estate car. Or you could commission the Q West Tesla Model S shooting brake, which takes a saloon Model S Tesla and chops the back a bit and makes it into a really handsome sort of carbon fiber long roof. I do like that car, but you can't just buy it from a dealer. 911 GTSs are historically the sort of the thinking person's choice really they're not out and out kind of race cars there's that is that sweet spot and i'm going back to that kind of soul stirring feel it, it feels like it's got extra personality and flair without being just a powerhouse that that kind of like bite of the brake that feel of the brake pedal the thinness of the steering wheel the nimble that turn in that completely disguises its weight until you really are leaning on it. And this is the thing about EVs. If you're not familiar driving uh, a sporty EV, because there's not a lot of normal engine noise and because there's not an RPM to see, you can soon barrel into a corner quicker than you were ever intending. Right, zero to 62, 3.7 on the GTS. So slower than the turbo, quicker than the normal one. I initiate by just going into Sport Plus, left foot on the brake, right foot mashed on the throttle, and then you'll hear it. Oh, into second gear. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Because of course it has a gearbox. It has a, a, a second gear in the, in the rear end, and you hear it switch, but only when you really, really need that full power. So the GTS in this form means that it's its most aggressive chassis setup. Uh, I've got it in sport mode so it will be a little bit harder and so that's a tune of the adaptive damping, the air, the air springs, um, it's got torque vectoring as standard, it is optional rear steer and of course, it's uh, being the GTS, it's four wheel drive, it's twin motor. Um, in, in the future, you'll be able to get a rear wheel drive entry level model Taycan uh, Sport Turismo shape. And actually I've spent quite a lot of miles in the saloon Taycan base model, rear wheel drive, 5.4 seconds to 62. And uh, I find it to be really quite a satisfying car. It's quite pure. It's a good 200 kilos lighter um, and it will be 73,000 pounds. That's about the, the cheapest of Taycans. This though, 104 grand, just under 600 horsepower in overboost mode, 517 PS in normal mode, 
850 newton meters, so loads of torque. But this is where the GTS starts to feel quite special. It's the focus of the steering and the, the damping, and it, honestly, it, it's, it's unusual because you're in a car that's pretty wide and it's damn heavy, over 2.3 tons, and yet it, it seems to shrug it off and hide it. So you can set different modes. You don't have to just leave it in Sport or Sport Plus or Normal or Range. You can adapt uh, your own individual setting. But of course the torque vectoring is there to add stability and help eliminate body roll. And that's the other thing. Yes, it's a damn heavy car, but the weight's down low because of EV and it, it corners just so flat and the ride is firmer because it's a GTS. Uh, I've been driving it to and from work in normal mode. And I find it to be firm but comfortable. And a lot of modern cars, especially a lot of modern European cars, we've got used to a, a firmer ride um, with things like Audi and Mercedes liking a bit of a firm ride. But this, it's, it's so highly enjoyable it stirs the soul. I think if you were going to pick an electric car to say to people, it's sporty, it can be practical, you could probably get half decent efficiency out of it if you put it in range mode and, and really kind of hyper mild it. But it's got a soul. It actually feels like a real sports car, a rounded package. The brakes are better than the 4S, but they're not quite as um, aggressive as the as, as the turbo model, the, the steel brakes. And of course, Porsche, they don't do hard regen. Um, you can't dial in and dial out different levels of regen. You just switch it on or switch it off. The regen kind of comes in when your foot presses the pedal rather than one pedal driving it, if you're with me. I don't mind. A theoretical range of over 300 miles. I don't do range tests on the late brake show because it's quite a technical thing to do. I tend to do an early drive of the car and get more of a, a bigger picture about it. Okay, this is the business end of the Taycan Sport Turismo. This is why you buy it. Obviously, the original Taycan, the, the regular, the saloon, has a more of a kind of a letterbox slot for boot. It, there's a lot of space, but it's just an awkward entry. This exactly the same as the cross turismo uh, you've got this you've got a hatchback obviously and you've got this two-piece ever so slightly convoluted parcel shelf which can split into two now i would probably use it without that although it's covered in porsche's answer to uh, alcantara which is called race tech i think that oh take this out that there is a decent sized boot. So what is it? 446 litres, all right? And you've got a cubby down there for extra cabling and stuff. And you've got cubbies either side and elasticated parts here and tie downs. Bear in mind with the seats down, over 1200 litres, that's serious. And you have a fruit, a front boot. And I'll show you that in a tick. So you've got quite a few combinations given the potency and the performance of this car. Not as big a boot as the Audi RS6, which I think is 565 litres, but nearly at 530 with a couple of different options. I would never run it. If you, have a, if you own a dog, you would never use the parcel shelf. Never, never. Oh, and I'm pretty sure this is optional three seats abreast at the rear. You, I think it comes as standard as a four seater, but you can have it as a five. Don't know why I just pointed at it then. It's a remote control. Okay. Because it's an electric car, there is a motor under here. This is the GTS, so it's two motors, four wheel drive. Rear wheel drive base model will be available in due course. 84 litre boot. That much of my arm. I could probably get in it. I've been there and done it, haven't I? Ha, 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 ha.
it, it does sound like there's someone in the back seat with a Vuvuzela trolling you. It's a strange sound. I don't know whether I get bored of it or not. Now on the smoother roads, there's, there is this spooky kind of nimble feeling to it. Uh, and it's a big car. Porsche have always been really good about the way in which they calibrate steering and things, but the fact that it just, it steers really quickly, nimbly, but it's a big car. It's a heavy car. I don't know, and I feel like this level of power that we're dealing with here, just over 500 horsepower, uh, a smidge under 600 horsepower on that boost in Sport Plus, maybe is the sweet spot. I would really urge you to try a base model Taycan though, because if you use it more for kind of practical reasons rather, rather than sporty reasons, I think it's a phenomenal thing. Although I've not driven it yet because it hasn't come out yet as an estate car. So I'm going to stick it in normal mode on the, uh, the chrono, sport chrono drive mode. Here you go, normal. Immediately the throttle's just a little bit more chilled out. This control, this sort of floating glass panel is very attractive. This is all very slick. Uh, there's a bit too much touch screen going on for my liking for the basics like climate, heated seat, etc. And the other thing is I've adjusted it to my liking, 18 wear adjustable seats. However, there are two things I cannot see when I'm sat here behind the wheel. I can't see the start stop button. Not that you always need it because it's automatic most of the time. And I can't see the little toggle, uh, the, drive, the drive toggle to put it in D and park and neutral and reverse. I can't see it. So I guess, do I need to see it? I only use that once in a while and I only use that once in a while because it's an auto. So about 15 kilos heavier, heavier than the equivalent saloon Taycan. Not a lot. And about 800 pounds more per spec. So again, pretty much on par really. And uh, I knew I was going to prefer it to the Cross Turismo. The Cross Turismo is a fine car. I just feel like this is more relevant to me as I would want to buy a car uh, and the, the attributes that the Cross Turismo has I probably wouldn't make much use of. You can actually put the suspension up on this because it's air, air suspension anyway. Did someone say product placement? No. <laughs> Available in the merch shop. Inside the long roof Taycan, the same as the Cross Turismo remember, you get extra headroom, over 45 millimeters, and it does make a big difference, especially in the back, and even more especially now that this version is showcasing this amazing adaptable glass panoramic roof. It's actually called the uh, variable light control roof. So there's a little button in the menu, beautiful haptics by the way on this, uh, and you can change it it's got nine different sections in this strange uh, electrocharged glass roof and you can press it and have it bold, clear, matte or semi. In fact, when you press semi, you can have two types of semi. It's true. And it has a pattern. It's so clever. Now, Porsche haven't told me how much this option is. But I think it's a fantastic thing. I mean, a pano roof in a car like this is good anyway, a low roof car, but it's very cool. And that is a world first. Because it's the GTS, you get a load of not Alcantara, Porsche, race techs, it's called. I thought it was race tech, it's race techs. So you get it all down the side of the center console, along the base of the dash. Obviously the tech is the same as all Taycans. So touch screen here, touch screen here, touch screen here. You can flip stuff over to the passenger, uh, which doesn't bother me, but my daughter thinks it's a great idea. I can flip over some parts of the infotainment to her. The steering wheel is your race techs, not Alcantara covered. Thin rim, I've, I've admired this steering wheel in many other Porsches. And because it's a GTS, you've got your drive modes on a, on a lovely little wheel here, which goes between normal sport, range mode, sport plus, and that kind of thing. Uh, this bit is all blacked out. Because it's a GTS, they black out most of the controls, like piano black. But yeah, it's, it's what I've seen and, and appreciated before. 
The GTS seats here, they're slightly different. Again, smothered in race techs. And I, I've, I'm sure it's the same as uh, of all Taycans, but it's got this really well adjustable headrest which comes out to meet your neck. And I do very, very much like that. Let's climb in the back quick. This is what makes the Taycan special back here. The Sport Turismo nurse, that extra headroom, it just feels so much better. Why have I got a funnel, you ask? Well, because the GTS model has a slightly different synthesized Porsche sound than the normal Taycan. And I was trying to think of how I could recreate it, but it's kind of... <laughs> it's just, just listen, it's a very odd sound. I kind of dig it. Oh, I'm not sure that's working, frankly. I feel a bit embarrassed. Anyway, it's really good. Really good back here. I enjoy it. You can option it as a four or a five seater, in other words, three abreast. You've got your armrest, like you do with most cars, but you can also drop this armrest, this whole center section in the name of practicality to get some stuff in. And also when you drop the seats, I noticed earlier, when you drop the seats on the Sport Turismo, it leaves the side bolster of these bucket seats. It leaves one of them in situ. Interesting bit of packaging that. There isn't really a competitor for this at the moment. I mean, yes, you can get a, a coach built Model S um, shooting brake made by a the company in Norfolk called Q West, and it's a wonderful thing. The Model S is not, not the same kind of car. I know you can compare this Turbo S model to the Plaid Model S with, that's really powerful and extremely impressive. And the most impressive thing for me about Tesla is the drivetrain. The battery and the motor is exceptional. In fact, it's probably almost unrivaled. But you know, this is a package. And I know what it sounds like now, it's reminding me, it sounds like a slide whistle. You know those slide whistles that they use in old cartoons? This what it sounds like. There's just something about a Porsche, that combination of when you shut the door, it feels solid. The way the dash is built, it feels really, really, luxurious and special it feels expensive and i know this is an expensive car it kind of feels like your money's being backed up with quality braking power the torque vectoring everything just seems to work it, it's hard when you're reviewing a gts model i think because it's quite hard to convey what extra little things it sprinkles extra magic to the recipe i still can't believe this car's over 2.3 tons because honestly it just doesn't feel it it's deeply impressive whether it's back roads like this which are quite rutted and undulating or just putting it on the smooth tarmac on the a1 really good my kids both looked at this car and were like Oh, Daddy, I like that. My daughter's like, oh, it's a Porsche. It's a shame it's red. My son's like, I really like Porsches. I don't see why people buy Lamborghinis when they could buy Porsches. <laughs> I love my kids. Now, yeah, I can put the chassis level right now is on, on low. I can put the chassis up to normal. So just a little bit higher, a little bit softer. love the brake feel honestly to get that brake feeling like that on an ev must be very difficult to hide all of this weight make it feel as as agile as it is must be so hard to do hats off to porsche 155 miles an hour capped uh, electrically governed on this that's fine with me The other thing is, you can probably hear it now, this tarmac sort of changing in, in texture. Porsches are quite loud, they're quite road noisy. What the bloody hell was that? That was a stone from a truck. Did it just crack the windscreen? Didn't land on my really expensive 
liquid crystal variable roof did it. I'm fortunate enough to be uh, to get a really early drive of this car in Britain, albeit in a German spec car. But I like driving left hand drive in Britain. I like being left and far over to the left in the gutter. I think it's because I'm left handed, it feels a little bit native to me. If you get bored of this kind of weird futuristic synthy slide whistle, of course you can just turn it off. And then it's just an EV and all you hear is wind, a bit of wind and a bit of tyre, and that's that. And I suspect that's how most people will live with it. You can see your, your regen there just as a simple swing needle. Do you know what? In the same way that I think the Panamera is at its best when it's an estate car at Sport Turismo, I feel the same about the Taycan. This is the shape it sh it, 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 it's best at, it's most practical at, it's most attractive. So it's supple. The ride is supple even in normal mode. More supple than normal because of the GTS thing. Oh, I like it. I would definitely have one of these over a turbo or a turbo S. Yes, the turbos are faster. This is fast enough, trust me. This is, this is quick enough. And it's taut. Wonder how many, wonder how many race techs animals were killed to make this amazing fabric. I would challenge anybody who thinks that electric cars are devoid of soul and charisma to drive one of these, GTS especially, take it out for 24 hours and just drink it in and drive it as hard or soft as you like. Of course, the thing that the Taycan doesn't have is the Tesla charging network, the supercharging network, and that's always something that's gonna play um, to Tesla's advantage. But if we park that for the time being, the chassis dynamics of this are far superior to any Tesla I've driven. And I would compare this more to a fast piston estate like a E63 AMG or an RS6. And honestly, this is, for me, this is a much better car technologically a leap away from an RS6 right now. Similar price, and this isn't going to be outlawed. So, Taycan Sport Turismo, what do I think? I think it's this combination of desirability and sustainability which you get with some electric cars, luxury electric cars. But what this does also is I think it backs up all of its sporting credentials. It's a thoroughly enjoyable car, regardless of it being EV. And it can be as techy and nerdy as you want it to be, or if you just want to get in and point and shoot, you can. And that's what I love. That's what I really have time for with the Taycan. And as I said in my, my previous video, when I reviewed the Cross Turismo version, I had a hunch that they were gonna make this car. And now that they have, I know this is my favorite version. This is my favorite version of the Taycan because it combines practicality, sportiness, but not like overtly sportiness. And it sits right in the middle of the range. Hope you've enjoyed this Late Break Show review episode. Um, if you're not already a subscriber, why not subscribe? What do you think of this version of the Taycan? Is this the sweet spot? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're a Patreon and you support this channel through Patreon, thank you very much. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will leave a, uh, a description, a link in the description below. Cheers.